Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to have you back again. As always, I am your pilot for today, Farflung Wander, and we will be continuing our career of Isle 2 Sturmovik. Turn to the shoes of one Peter Vorobaya. Before we get started, I would like to give credit to a friend of mine, and quite honestly, better pilot, a central who taught me about something called RPM. Now this might sound like a really dumb thing, and you'd be correct. But what RPM basically controls is how fast it spins. Kinda. It's difficult to explain, but one of the problems we ran into last week with our engines constantly overclocking might be mitigated by this. Um, we'll figure it out as we go. I don't exactly remember his advice off the top of my head, but I trust we are smart people, and we'll make do. Anyways, we last left off. Um, our squadron took horrific casualties. Uh, we have been reduced from our original 12 to a rather motley crew of replacements. Our commander... It's just a captain. In fact, most of the squadron is made up of captains now. We used to have a major, but he died during the first day. <laughs> so it's a weird mix of officers of the same rank and much more junior officers filling in slots. Anyways, today we are in for two flights, and then we'll stop. Uh starting with the last flight of this in-game day, which is the 12th of October, 1941, which is an enemy railway junction attack. So where's that railway junction? Well, if we're here, follow the line, our attack will be here, at the town of Koshniaki. Uh, this should be an interesting one. I've never done a railway attack before in Isle 2. I have little doubts in our capabilities, though. So, let's go over the options again. We'll be starting realistic speed on the runway, moderate difficulty level, medium frontline density, uh, which give us a really nice and balanced experience. And we're going to go to the mission briefing page. And for the two people who are actively watching this right now, how are you doing? And how is the chat, how is the audio sounding? Alright, so, we are the last in flight, so we're 6, taking off at 3.29 in the afternoon, effectively 3.30 by the time we're off the tarmac, uh, actually not even tarmac, just grass, or Vlasievo is, er, uh, Vlasievo is not a airfield proper, but a aerodrome, with a grass strip in the vein of the First World War. Anyways, we'll be taking off at 3.30. We've got heavy clouds at 700 meters and a layer thickness of 800 meters. So it's going to be difficult flying. And we might have difficulty keeping an eye on our squadron. So we'll have to be careful about that. We've got uh, winds to the east 6 meters per second and turbulence below the clouds. We'll be approaching the target at 1,500 meters, which should put us above that cloud layer. Uh, but the target altitude is 156 meters, so we might be in for some difficult. Uh, temperature is cold, negative 2 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is not terribly great either, 731. So, according to the recent reconnaissance data, there is unusual enemy activity at the railway station designated by waypoint 3 on your flight map. Take off immediately and hit any ground targets you might find in the area. So what's our flight looking like? Take off at bearing 90 at 133 meters, and we go for 10 kilometers, and we make a sharp turn towards waypoint 2 over the airfield of Kolodesi. 
at 247 degrees, 1500 meters above sea level, this is for 79 kilometers of flight. And then we make a final turn over the German front line to the town of Kosniaki itself, bearing 277, 1500 meters for 56 kilometers. After expending our ordnance and otherwise just causing as much chaos as possible, we are going to divert back up northeast to waypoint 4, which is over the city of Verie Veria. Veria. And that is at bearing, I believe that's 4-3, at 1500 meters for 64 kilometers. And from there, the final leg to waypoint 5 at bearing 7 1, 133 meters, 64 kilometers. We'll be landing. Now, what have they outfitted us with? We have bombs. I'm going to change the bomb timer to contact. Uh, the two second timer has had interesting consequences and I'm unsure of his, how uh, useful it's been. So we're just going to set that back to if it hits the ground it goes off. It's a bit da more dangerous for us which means if we're flying too low we will blow ourselves up. Uh, we have the same configuration as last time. We have two 23mm VYA-23 cannons on the wings. We've got eight ROFS-132 rockets. And we also have, in these bomb bays here and here, two FAB-100 bombs. Our weapons convergence is 500 meters. And for those who don't know, weapon convergence is a space... Please ignore the rocket. I honestly don't know how it got there space a certain distance away from the nose of the plane where the wing gun wings the wing the guns on the wings meet their target point the bullets aim towards that point so ours is set 500 meters above the plane which is good for ground attack so with that done we're going to step into the cockpit oh dear i just realized i made a terrible mistake let us see if track ir will activate See, I was not thinking. I forgot to completely finish setting up. Everything else is working. It's just an issue of that. So, as per usual, we only have a couple of seconds once the game starts to get orientated and lower our flaps, uh, put on our takeoff lights, and otherwise prepare ourselves for takeoff. So we're going to do that real quick-like. Ah, I figured we'd do this. Input devices. Camera. Hmm. Okay, we might be in for some problems, chat. Usually this game picks up controller input if it's delayed. Alright. Hate to say it, we are going to have to restart the game. Please wait a minute. So why did I have to restart the game? Well, you see, Track AR is a great bit of technology, but some games don't recognize it if it's turned on in the middle of play. This is something I've always appreciated the Arma series for, because Arma allows you to refresh what equipment or attachments you have plugged into your computer in-game. So if I forget to turn on Track IR, I can just turn it on, go to the control menu, and click Refresh, and it'll notice it. Not so for this. No fear, I'll just speed right through where to where we left off. Uh, the settings should be the same, configuration should be the same, our target should be the same. It's just an issue of making sure we can turn our heads. Turn down the light in my room so I don't boil. These things, they happen. So for those of you who notice his email address, yeah, yeah, oh well, just, you know, don't wear it out. Not much to be done about it, I suppose, at this point, aside from just remove it from the highlight. 
which would also retroactively remove uh, me having to restart the game. Eh. As you notice, the flight plan is identical, flight layout's identical, our setup is identical. In fact, it even saved us switching the bomb timer to contact. Occasionally, things work out well for us. Who would have thunk it? Anyways. With that done, we are going to very quickly make sure that we are all set up. Yep, there's that propeller throttle. Set the fuel mixture to max. Open up the water radiator, 50%. Close the oil radiator to 50%. And once that guy to our right moves, we take off. So come on, buddy. You're rolling. You're yawing a little to the right, so we'll correct that, and... Airborne. Raise our pitch trimmer to zero, so our plane isn't trying to pitch down. Raise the flaps. Now we work to catch up with the rest of the flight. And if you're wondering, hey, Wanderer, isn't that reduced throttle warning what caused your plane to get trashed the last two flights? Yes, it is. We'll be dealing with it in a minute. Uh, for now, though, the larger issue is making sure we stay with the squadron as we get up to speed. We are going to roll our RPM. About 90%. And pitch the nose trimmer down a little. So we are not losing airspeed if we don't have to avoid it. In fact, actually, I'm going to push that back up to 100 just to make sure we can stay up with them. As you can see, we've got a lot of storm clouds over Moscow today. And some rain. Alright, we're going to lower the throttle, or not the throttle, sorry. The RPM down to 80%. I think is a good cruise mode. And the engine coolant's having some issue. Open the radiators up a little. We're also going to lower our airspeed because we're coming up on them a bit too fast for my liking. And hey presto, we are in formation. We are not using boost. Now it's just an issue of making sure that we don't get ourselves killed as we approach the target altitude. I'm going to have to shalom the plane over to the left a little. Is flying through a cloud, but cloud bank is awfully dangerous. As you can see, he's right there. Once we're above it, we can be a little bit safer. But formation flying is tremendously dangerous. Isn't that just... Sometimes, this game just really takes my breath away. It's the kind of thing you would see in a movie. Here we are, flying it. Got a bit of turbulence, you can kind of... Not touching the stick, and you can feel the plane bounce around a little. So I'm going to ease up on the throttle a little the nose down so we've got a little bit more level flight. We are now at an altitude of 1200 meters. 
the old plane left to avoid a collision. If I think that's wingman number five on our right. So when the time comes for battle, we are going to open our RPM back up to full uh, and put the plane into boost mode, which is going to be useful for when we really, really, really need hard acceleration fast. But for this, this is this is peace flying. This is the kind of thing you would do under non-combat scenarios. Not lie though, I'll be happy to be above the turbulence and feel the plane like it's under control again. As it stands, I don't like how bumpy the flight is. Max the throttle a little, because I feel like we're lagging behind. We seem to have two flights of three now. Four, five, and six, with six being us in the rear, and one, two, and three up front, forming the vanguard of this element. Sorry, everyone, I still also have not been able to wrangle out what the Twitch app's problem is. But we are too high. Hang on. So, unfortunately, I might miss things in chat. I'll try to pay attention best I can. Just ease this out. Oh, easy, easy, easy plane. Keep the formation a little bit tighter. Below us is the heartland of the Soviet Union under siege. It's going to get a whole lot worse before the war is over. It won't get a whole lot worse before the battle's over. For now, I'm just going to be happy to see Peter survive the next 24 hours. 448 however long it takes for us to fly our second sortie. Um, inclement weather is very much a thing in this game, so if it rains too heavily, or if it starts to snow, flights may start getting cancelled, and sometimes they can get cancelled for days. It's just an issue of risk-reward. Do you risk throwing your airframes up into an unstable weather environment in order to provide ground cover. And sometimes the answer to that is no. Wait for the skies to clear. This is an era before modern technological conveniences. We have no heads-up displays. We have no um, radars. Or if there are radars, we don't have them. Hey, wonders. Yep. It did. It did. But... The throttle becomes less of an issue when you've got um, the RPM set to lower. As far as I understand how the boost works, boost requires us to have RPM beyond 80%, throttle beyond 80%. Also, I just realized my fuel mix is a bit high, so I'm going to lower that down to 50%, which is the automatic setting. That should save us some fuel, though I think the risk of us running out of fuel is actually kind of low. And if it becomes an issue, they are, there are literally dozens of alternate airfields spaced between us and our home. So we can manage. The good news... Ah, okay. I see the formation we've got going now. So we're going to do a right... Yaw. Just gently, gently, gently slide in position behind and below five into formation in a long right-hand echelon. <laughs> now isn't this cool? Like experienced Soviet pilots we are now, suddenly. 
well, maybe not super experienced, but we've learned. In fact, we've learned enough that we're no longer redlining our engine just to get from point A to point B. at bearing, oh, about two, four something, two, five something. So if I had to guess, we're still on the route. Yep, we're still on the route to waypoint two. So if chat has any questions, now's a good time to do it. Otherwise, it is just smooth formation flying from here. Dropping below this formation a little. Hang on. It's up the engine. Give ourselves a bit of trim. Slow the engine down so that we don't careen into five as we pitch up. So we were getting a little bit too low. Now we're getting a little bit too high. Steady on, less steady on. Coming up on waypoint two pretty soon. After that, we'll begin our turn towards three, which is when things start to get dangerous. Good news is that the skies seem to be clear, no sign of Germans, which is nice. So at this point in the war, they have not quite total air supremacy, but it's a battle that they are, at the moment, somewhat winning. It's going to change as German air crews start to take casualties, and as better and better aircraft are brought to bear. What is... Is that glare? Or are those two lights right off my nose? The pilot just ditched a flare. Uh, one flare, two flare. What's he doing? Stork is scarnet. Ah, okay. We just regroup with our uh, squadron. Those lights I must have seen in the distance were probably the flares from the uh, from the escorts aerodrome. And in fact, I believe those are our escorts right now right off our 11 o'clock, moving towards our 10. Our, if it's the same squadron as last time, which I think it is, it'll be a flight of MiG-3s, which was, for a long time, one of the standard air supremacy fighters of the Soviet Union during the Second World War. Um, it was a monoplane. Uh, I believe it's an all-aluminum construction, uh, similar to the IL-2 in that respect. Uh, it was a very, very respectable fighter aircraft, from all information I can find on it. Um, and in many ways was the weapon that ensured the Soviets would have air superiority over Moscow during the winter of 1941 into 1942. Uh, and it was, in many ways, the start of the illustrious MiG family, which today includes entries such as the MiG-29, MiG-27, uh, MiG-21, you know, all of those famous Russian planes you've probably heard of at some point. Alright, so 
that guy. Our five is slipping over to our right, so we're going to slip over to his right and slow our throttle so we don't blow past. This this is honestly very cool. I formation flying is an incredibly difficult thing, and I'm not saying I'm good at it. To even be passingly decent allows for some very very spectacular imagery. But let's tighten this up a little. So as we know, if anything happens to our aircraft due to damage or interception or whatever, our priority is just to head due northeast, get over Soviet lines. If we can land the plane, fine. If we can take it back to base, even better. But at all costs, we don't want to die, and we don't want to parachute out over German lines. Otherwise, we are absolutely positively going to be prisoners of war. Raven 1, interest, interest air target. I believe that's not our intercept, our, uh, our escort squadron, is it? I missed their call sign when they introduced themselves, but it's possible it is. Just having a bit of difficulty keeping up with them in position. Let our engine do the talking. Where are we on the map? You're almost to the front line. What can we expect at the railroad? Now's a good time to start thinking about that. If I had to guess, I would expect uh, soft targets, like tents or trucks. I would expect a ring of anti-aircraft positions, which we may want to engage first, even if it means we might miss out on the juicier targets, just dealing with FLAC and AAA. It's just a good idea. It will save us and the squadron a lot of time and casualties and maintenance. Um, and there's a very decent possibility there will be a train there that we can engage and destroy. Um, that'll be our bonus target for tonight, but I make no promises. Because, one, they're fairly hardened, and two, I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing our sin for such a dangerous approach until we were sure that we've more or less have run of the thing. So just providing suppression on anti-aircraft positions. Uh-oh. Gannett, I'm pretty sure, is our in-support squadron, and they're noticing fighters to the north. Which is... Uh... Oh no, I think that's behind us. Two kilometers out. I can't see behind us. Okay, our squadron is in, is doing something. I don't know what happened to five. There's five. Looks like we just made a very radical turn. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we've been jumped. We're about to find out by who and how many. Uh, but it looks like they're trailing behind us by some degree, so it's possible our fighters are doing their job. South, south, that's in the direction of travel. So we're about to fly right into the teeth of it.
I need to up our RPM to 85 so I can catch up. Where are we on the map? We are over German lines. Seven kilometers southwest from Gannett Squadron. Uh, I think we're beginning our approach. Start patrol for ground targets on your own now. Okay. Up the RPM to 90%. We're gonna do this. Squadron is diving away a bit faster than we can keep up. As it stands, we're pushing the airframe actually kind of close to its limits. So we're here. Our target should be a rail line. There's one of our planes right in front of us. There's the flak coming up to greet us. We need to get closer, otherwise we're a sitting duck. They love going after isolated pilots. So we're actually going to bite some hard right slip, lower our throttle, go up and over. Where are we going? There's the flak. Bombs away. Couldn't tell you what we hit, if anything. It's possible we just scared some Germans. So, start making a wide sweeping turn up and around. What do we have to look at? got a whole lot of Germans down there. In fact, you all should have seen the wall of anti-aircraft that we were flying into. So we're going to bring the plane over. Right-hand turn. Anything on that railway? I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think I see a train. I know I said I was going to go after the anti-aircraft first, but we're actually going to Try to give them something to remember us by. That's a flak battery off to our left. Anti-aircraft down there. Oh, I need to close vents. Rockets away. Alright. I think that shellacked that train real good. Oil radiator to about 20%. You might be wondering how much destruction caused. I couldn't tell you. Aha! <laughs> Look at that. Platform, gondola, oil tank. We caused some significant damage to that facility. So, I can't advise vectoring in on that target right there unless we come in at it like so. So we're going to make a sweeping turn. We're going to try to engage the anti-aircraft position with our remaining ammunition. We've got a lot of ammunition too, so it's not really much of a concern. Where's that battery? There it is. Okay, that's that flak gun destroyed, so we're going to pull up. We're going to make a right hand turn. There's the train that we engaged. In fact, we've got a pretty good chance to look at the damage we caused. Uh, we seem to have struck those- oh! God. 
engine damage, cooling system failure. We took a anti-aircraft hit right to the nose. We're gonna have to abort. In fact, we're taking more hits. The plane is becoming less responsive by the minute. This might not be a plane we can recover, so we're just going to make for Soviet lines. <sighs> okay. How long can our plane last? Uh, pressure's shaky, engine is damaged. We're leaking oil. Yeah, we're leaking fuel. We're leaking hydraulics. In fact, we're leaking just about everything. So we're going to push the engine as hard as we can. We're going to make for friendly territory. And once we get over the line, we're going to bail out. This plane is lost. But Peter does not necessarily have to be. I can feel we've got damage to our... one of our ailerons. Because this thing is wanting to nose over to the left. Uh, at this point, it's getting harder and harder to see where we're going. The windshield is coked, or coated, in debris. The engine is still holding strong. Come on, baby, just a little bit further. Get us to Soviet territory and we'll bail. Peter himself just took a hit, if you notice the screen going bloody there, but it's not very serious. We might be out for an in-game day or two, it's hard to say. I'm sorry, is that machine gun fire? We've got a German on our tail. He just overshot us. Ah. God, he's trying to finish off our wounded bird. Alright, we've got to make it back over. Russian lines. We're going to fly a little defensively and force him to attack. Come on. Come on, try something. Try something, I dare you. Come on. Where'd he go? There's not much we can do aside from just try to waggle our wings, but we're almost over Soviet territory. I don't mind giving the Bosch the kill. He can shoot my plane down for all I care, but I cannot allow Peter to die so early into his career. So we're going to just try to lure him into a bad situation. We're going to also open up our radiators as wide as they can. Got to be just a little further over. He didn't get bored of us, did he? Engine pressure is okay. I'm going to navigate us now that we're over Soviet territory towards a nearby aerodrome. In fact, it's the one we made an emergency landing at earlier in, uh, a couple in-game days ago at Medin. But I'm going to maintain a fairly high elevation so that if something goes wrong, we can just bail. Okay, the right side's leaking fuel. In fact, left side's leaking fuel. It's... Well, it's near impossible to see. But we're over friendly anti-aircraft defenses, so on the plus side, that should wave that 109 away. This... We're not alone. Just made a pass. He's making his pass. We're gonna try to rock the plane and force him to overshoot. The aerodrome is right in front of us. It's off our, uh, one o'clock. 
fact, it should be right off our nose. Low fuel, less than 10 minutes at nominal engine miss. Oh, man. I'm gonna make an emergency landing approach. That's the aerodrome, right there. We can just make it. I think I can land it, or at least ditch it. Landing gear down, navigation lights on, flaps down. Come on. Come on, hold together. Okay, this is the airbase. This is the airbase. Oh, I've come in way too fast. It's gonna be rough. I'm gonna make a uh, left hand turn. It's alright if it's not clean, it just needs to work. Hard landing. You basically just pancake the aircraft onto the ground. Alright, eject, eject. Finish mission. Yeah. Holy god. Alright. That was a forced landing. Uh. Oh. I know it says mission failed, but we technically completed our objective, and that is the second Sturmovik of the campaign we have lost. Wow. Make a heck of a highlight reel. In that time, we destroyed five railroad cars, cars, and one anti-aircraft artillery gun. That was... That was something to go through, folks. In fact, we can check the event log and see what happened. Uh, we took off. Everything was going fine, 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 fine. Then over here, this is when everything went kind of crazy. So we have black guns, abound. There are the things that we destroyed. I think it's buried. Yeah, the train gondola. There's an anti-aircraft gun we hit. There's a sh uh, Sturmovik that got shot down. And there's us, where we crashed. Uh, you can see our path. Right about here, that 109 jumped us. Uh, we are horribly lucky that that man was not very competent, because we could have died right there. A good burst to the cockpit, or each one of the wings would have just snapped it right off, and there's no way we would have been able to get out in time. But... We made it. We have survived. Peter is alive. Right? Yep. Peter Vorobayev is not only alive, he's been awarded a medal for courage. <laughs> we have lost two IL-2s in... One, two, three, four... Wait, actually... One, two, three, four days. <laughs> For only seven enemy emplacements destroyed. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to the second day of the campaign. Or not the second day, sorry. The last day of the first phase. That was a bit exciting there, wasn't it, chat? Alright, so what do we have? 13th of October, 1941. Uh, we have average weather, clouds at 600, at 800 meters. Temperature is raised back up to 1 degree Celsius, so it's only just a bit above freezing. 741 millimeters of mercury. Wind to the north at 2 meters a second. We've been replaced. Two new IL-2s. So we're back up more or less to full. I believe those were the aircraft actually in repair, uh last couple of days. So let's see. Mr. Or actually, Comrade Lieutenant Vespayatkin and Junior Lieutenant Oleg Dinev are both wounded. I uh, couldn't tell you how long they'll be out. Yep, planes that were being repaired are gone. So for our two hours of flight time, we've actually done a decent amount. Uh, but we've only succeeded in one mission, and by succeed we mean uh, took off, flew, and came back to the airbase. 
or at least landed safely. I would love to know how we got that many aerial kills, but say la vie. So checking the planning room. Our last flight of tonight is also the last flight of the day and the last flight of the phase. Couldn't ask for it better. So let's see. 747, our friends are going up for an enemy artillery position attack. And then at 259, we're doing a railway junction attack. So where are those at? Seven forty seven enemy artillery position near the region of Miat Levo. And then two fifty nine railway junction at Ugremu Ugrumovo. Sorry, my Russian is not that great. So we are going to proceed and let the AI do its flight. Fortunately, one of our planes crashed, but all of our pilots are alive. So, they managed to get two vehicles, they got managed to get four vehicles total and five buildings, so probably tents. Now it is our turn up to bat. Oh, interesting. One of our pilots was transferred to a different squadron. In fact, he was transferred to a fighter squadron. That's unusual. So, we're going to boot up the mission. We're not going to start just yet, because I'm going to take a few minutes to use the restroom and... Well, that's a cool picture. Uh, to use the restroom and get some water. We'll fly our final sortie of the night, and then that'll be it for tonight, everyone. Anyways, I will be right back. Feel free to make yourself comfortable and uh, let you know when I'm ready.
Hello, I am back for the last flight of the night. So, what have we here? We have, taking off from our usual airfield, an interesting flight. We'll be taking off reverse of the direction we usually do. 272, 133 meters for 10 kilometers. We directed to the airfield at Colo Daisy, 244, 1000 meters, 69 kilometers, and then directed effectively almost on a straight line at 244 for 1,000 meters, at 1,000 meters for 71 kilometers to our target location. Uh, like before, we're going to be attacking and trying to destroy as much German infrastructure as possible. We are also about as close to the Russian front line as we were last time, so in an emergency situation we should be able to bug out the way we came in. Uh, and when we are done with that, we'll proceed up to the town of, or the city of Mojek, Mojesk, at bearing one, at bearing four four, seventy eight kilometers, and then it's a straight shot back to the airfield, bearing eight eight, hundred thirty three meters for eighty two kilometers. Um, we know the weather conditions. So let's just check what squadron wanted us to take. Same thing as last time. They really do like their default. Just fine by me. So with that, we're going to get into it. As per usual, we have only seconds to get ready. Flight. That to 50. Make sure we're giving some good rudder so that we don't bump into our buddy on our right. If we slip into him, there will be disaster. And rotate. Like I said, rotate. Bit slow off the ground that time. In fact, a very dangerously slow off the ground that time. We'll be okay, but it's been a bit rough. Must be pancake into a tree right now. I think I tried to force the aircraft off the tarmac a little bit too early. It's alright. We'll be fine. the nav lights. Alright, as we try to catch up with our squadron. Checking to make sure my microphone is on, sorry. We're going to tone down our RPM to a. Uh, oh, interesting, pitch trimmer. Comfortable 90%. Actually, I'm going to kick the fuel mix over to 100% and push us back into boosted mode. Just a hair. I think our airspeed's a little bit low. I'm going to lower it back down to 50% to the automatic. Alright, we should be good there. Let's lower our pitch trim. And be a little bit careful as we begin our flight towards the war zone. So what were some of the lessons we learned from the last flight? Um, flying a path directly over German anti-aircraft guns, as it turns out, is not a fantastic idea. Uh, 
it's really quite as succinct as that. You were... I was kind of an idiot. You just take responsibility for that. Not mean we're going to be an idiot going forward. Or we might be. The world may never know. Or the world may find out in ten minutes. It's hard to say. But, if we can get our aircraft under control, make sure we're keeping up with the formation, we should be in good shape for the mission for today. We're entering a cloud bank, which is concerning. Hopefully we can keep visual on uh, our wingman here. I think I can. We've been climbing pretty steadily to about 1,000 meters, but I am still somewhat worried as to what we'll encounter up here, and if something will happen so that we lose track of everybody. One of the little details I love about this game is the ch shadows cast by clouds. I swear, I just cannot speak tonight. It... When you play the game for yourself, you can notice, I think, much easier the differences between reality and the game, uh, graphically speaking, um, fidelity speaking, and that's to be expected, but... I have a hard time thinking of a game that's prettier. I... In many ways, this is what flying looks like. It's just... It's loud, but serene. In these old things. The engine is, in many ways, the only noise you hear. That and the sound of the wind rushing past you. And I think there's something beautiful to that. Anyways. As we start looking to join formation, I'm trying to keep a reference of where the rest of the squadron is. Because if we check the roster, we are wingman 4. Ah, uh, there's 5 right now. So we're going to actually slot in between the plane right off our nose and the plane off to our low 2. Effectively 3 o'clock position. like how I can't see my wingman. We have to learn to trust our comrades, eh? Besides, as long as we trail closer to three, we, the chances of us bumping into five are relatively slim, I'd like to say. Ideally, information should be somewhere off to our right hand, our three o'clock position, and behind us below us, so that we have a safe gap to avoid collisions. I'm worried about what's going to happen when we start maneuvering for turns. Trying to find uh, four, five there. Avoid any possible collision. 
I think we're doing okay. I, if you notice how jumpy the plane is, it's because I'm still getting the hang of formation flying, so a lot of my maneuvers are short, uh, jerky, kind of inputs to the throttle, to the stick, and to the rudder pedals. They're attempt for me to try to maintain control over the aircraft and try to make sure it stays in that position. We slipped a little bit behind for... Um, I'm not really quite sure what one is doing at the moment. But I don't think it horrifically matters much either. As long as we keep an eye on our immediate surroundings, we should be okay. All the while, though, we have to keep an eye out for any possible interception, as the Germans will have defensive fighters, obviously. They're also going to have aircraft at the ready, patrolling uh, Soviet airspace, looking for targets just like us. And a formation of Sturmoviks is a very, very juicy target indeed. field off to our right, but I don't think it's the one we're supposed to be at. It's just a different one. It's funny to know as we're dipping out of continuous mode. Picking the map. Yep, we're nearly to waypoint two. We'll meet up with our fighter squadron escorts and continue on to the German line. Taking a drink, sorry. Raven is a different fighter squadron, not our concern. I just saw five beneath our uh, starboard wing, which means that he's safe and out of the way. I'm going to push the engine forward a little. Got to make sure we're in a good spot with four, three, three, four, four. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on keeping on. So at this stage in the Battle of Moscow, uh, Germans have launched Operation Typhoon, which is the attempt to secure Moscow and bring about an end of the war in the East. Uh, it was an ambitious maneuver, but it would be one doomed to failure for a variety of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, the German overall battle strategy was based off of misinformation and optimistic thinking by both high-level German commanders, we're talking like general staff, and by Hitler himself. And this would be something of a running theme through most of the war. Um, as it stood, Operation Barbarossa, the initial invasion of Russia in, the, in June of 1941, 22nd June specifically, was immensely successful, but it would not remain so for a while. Soviet frontline troops were caught off guard, undersupplied, etc. But as time went on, the Soviets would become much more proactive in how they were going to approach the war, what they were going to design, what vehicles and aircraft they were going to replace, and so on. They also had an immense manpower reserve, um, because at the time the Soviet Union stretched pretty large. Uh, we had, we're talking recruits from as far as uh, region of Afghanistan and Kazakhstan. I believe Kazakhstan. I have to check my history books to be 100% sure. This was not, you know, entirely egalitarian, the Soviet Union was a totalitarian state and they were conscripts, but Soviets had millions of people to throw at the war. And while the Germans did two, they had less millions to play with. Uh, the Soviets also had resources and lend lease from the Allies, both of which Germany lacked. Germany would have a steel and oil problem that lasted effectively the entire war. Not so with the Soviet Union. Uh, furthermore, 
the German army, the further into Russia it advanced, the more of a supply issue it ran into just in providing logistical support to combat units. We're not even talking manufacturing. Getting the, the big three, as it's called, beans, bullets, and bandages, two troops was increasingly difficult. This was because a lot of Soviet infrastructure wasn't that great, and the Germans had a hard time using what was left after the Soviets destroyed uh, during a scorched earth policy, you know, anything that was there. But furthermore, the Germans dramatically underestimated the length of their campaign. They were expecting a victory in fall of 1941, and you might be wondering, uh, you, you might not wonder why that's an odd thing because of the myth of the Blitzkrieg, but in reality, the Germans had never anticipated Blitzkrieg prior to Barbarossa. Uh, the invasion of Poland and the invasion of France in 1939 and 1940, respectively, were shocks to the world as much as it was to Germany. They had anticipated long campaigns, especially against France, where it would take many, many, many months in World War I-esque stalemates to break the front line. Instead, victory was achieved in a matter of months. Uh, I believe for Poland it was only about one month, and for France it was a little over two or three once the actual invasion began. There was also an interim period between uh, the invasion of Poland and the invasion of France, known as the Phony War. But uh, during the Phony War, a lot of things happened. It was called the Phony War mainly because there wasn't a lot of action on the French-German border. And even that's not entirely true. But uh, elsewhere in Europe, there was a lot of combat, uh, most notably the invasion of Norway. But anyways, as I was saying, the Germans had won in France with a speed they never had anticipated. And Barbarossa marks the first time the Germans started to buy their own propaganda. And they believed that Blitzkrieg was not only a thing, they had achieved uh, to the point that they were masters of it, but it was a thing they could achieve routinely now. This was just the way the world was going to work from here on in. We, the inventors of this new kind of warfare, are going to dominate. Uh, so they planned for a very short campaign on the par of what France and Poland had turned out to be. Whereas in reality, if they'd continued to overestimate, they might have had a slightly better chance. So badly did the Germans underestimate the logistical work they would need to do to win in Russia, that when the first winter in 1941 came, most German soldiers had little to no winter gear. And the winters of 1941 through 1943 are among some of the coldest on record in some areas of Russia. In short, the German invasion of Russia was flawed to begin with. So how does this lead into the invasion of the attack on Moscow itself? Well, by the time Barbarossa was starting to wrap up in late 1941 and follow the operations had begun, it became apparent that the Germans who had split their approach into three sectors, north, central, and south, were achieving no real victories. Um, and it was hoped that by taking Moscow... Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, we're going to have to worry about the history lesson later. Those were Messerschmitts right off our nose. We have been jumped once more. Now, our fighter escorts are about, and they're going to try to cover as best as they can. But we're going to have to be very, very careful. In fact, I think I just saw one right there. Yep, there he goes. He just strafed the pilot right off our nose. I wonder how many planes is it? Is it just that one, or is there more? We are capable of defending ourselves. The IL-2's weapons are not... Come on. I don't think his pass hit us. I didn't hear any impact noises on the airframe. It did scare me. Here are our fighters. They should be right on top of us. We're going to have to try to stay in the middle of the formation. 
so that we don't look like a very tempting target. And otherwise, just try to make sure that if anything happens, we know which way to head. We are currently on a southwest bearing. I think we're actually on just a direct west bearing right now. Um, so if we were to head due east, we'd probably be over Soviet lines if we're not already. Yeah, we're still over Soviet lines. If the engine gets damaged or the aircraft is disabled, we can turn the plane around, limp a couple of inches. Now, hang on. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god! His buddy... Our engine is damaged. We have to abort. Midair! Midair! Okay, I need to very quickly look up the uh, bailout. Uh, plane controls. What button is that? What button is that? Eject, left control E. We're gonna have to. Bailout, Peter. Oh my god, are we over Soviet territory? We are just, just barely over Soviet territory. Wow. We might be captured. This might be the end of the campaign. Okay, we bailed out. We actually managed to shoot down an enemy plane, though, which is... <laughs> which is great. But did Peter make it home? Because we were right up on the boundary when we were shot down. And I really screwed up by ramming into our buddies. Come on. Okay. All right. Thank God. Peter managed to land just close enough to the front line to where he was recovered by Soviet personnel. Uh, we screwed up real bad by ramming our fellow pilots. Um, I realized far too late that we were going to merge with our own planes, but I panicked when the plane was shot and the fuel tank took damage. And my immediate thought was to reverse my turn into the attack and try to get away, and that took us right into the flight of two. In fact, we flew effectively right in the middle of them, so it's possible that both of those planes also went down. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Fortunately, we only rammed one other plane, it looks like. And, uh... Looks like the attack was a wash. They returned. So that marks the third aisle two of the career to have been lost. But our first aerial victory. And while I know this is a bit earlier in the day than we usually stop, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to call it here for today. So, what's going on in the near future? On Friday, there will be no stream. I'm going to be out of town uh, at Langley, Virginia, as part of NASA's Community Aerospace Scholars Program, which is a four-day experience where effectively NASA watches to see how you do as you do a mock rover competition. It's exciting stuff. It means a lot for a potential career in the field, which is my goal as an aerospace engineering student. Um, but unfortunately, that means that we will not be able to have a stream. Uh, next Friday, we'll be continuing the career. Uh, plans may change on that, depending on how I'm feeling and whether or not I wish to uh, do some special stuff that week instead. And then the Sunday after that, we'll be having our second stalker stream as we continue through towards Agroprom research. Otherwise, thank you all for coming and have a great night.